Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're going to be in Isaiah chapter 12, verse 6, as well as Psalms chapter 17, verse 7 through 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this scripture. Thank you for its simplicity in us. God, help us to remain pure like little children. Help us to just remember you when we are in times of trouble. We give you glory and praise. There is no God but you, Lord. And there's no God for us but you, the real, true, and living God. We don't want anything but the real, and that is you. We love you, Jesus. In your precious name, we pray. Amen. Lead us, Holy Spirit. All right, so we are in Isaiah chapter 12, verse 6 to start out. So the first part of the conflation says in Isaiah chapter 12, verse 6, cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. So it's talking about crying out to the Lord and in in whatever situation you are in the the thing to do is remember god right it, whether you are in backed into a corner whether you are feeling good and things are going great whether you're high you're low whether you are in or out cry out and shout right as you live this in this world as you inhabit this world remember you are a sojourner here you are a guest and you will be going home someday. So you want to be crying out to the one who you are going home to. You need to cry out to the rock from which you were hewn. And that is Christ Jesus. That is the Father God. And he is the only one who can save you, right? He is the only one who is in the midst of you at all times. So it says, cry out and shout, right? That that cry out and shout, it, it may not make sense to the world, right? If you're crying out and shouting to God, if you're giving God praise in your home, if you are acknowledging God out in the city and as you go along and you, you speak his name and you're not ashamed of his name, that may not look right to the world. They might think you're kind of crazy, but that's okay because he is in the midst of you. Your life is favored. Your life is special. Your life belongs to God. So don't deny him. And he's not going to deny you, right? He's there with you at all times. He says he will never leave you nor forsake you. It says, cry out and shout thou inhabitant of Zion for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. We're going to be able to inhabit Zion. We're going to be in the new Jerusalem one day, and we're going to be able to occupy that, right? We're going to be able to live there with our Father in the midst of mansions and beautiful things, right? But even here today, now on this earth, in the old, we can still cry out and shout. We can still inhabit. We can still occupy and we can call on our father who is in the midst of us at all times all right let's go to its conflation scripture and that is psalm 17 um verse 7 wondrously show your steadfast love O savior of those who seek refuge from their adversaries at your right hand Ooh, here we go. Adversaries, right? Somebody who's come against you, somebody who does not agree with you, someone who is against you, trying to stop you from moving forward, from moving into the promised land, from occupying that territory, right? And this is not just physical people, but the influences that are around and surround physical people um, that are like spiritual hosts of wickedness and darkness and high places, all the those wicked forces and all that stuff. So they are trying to stop you from moving forward. They're trying to stop you from inhabiting. They're trying to stop you from occupying and going into the promised land. And they're trying to stop you from that, that eternal reward, right? Of, of Zion, of, of the new Jerusalem, of all the good things, right? He, they, they want to stop you from making it there. So as we go along on this journey, it's their job to divert us, to distract us, and to keep us off that path. But God is always there with us. Remember the conflation. He's always there. What does it say? Um, cry out and shout 
thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Meaning he's always there. He's in the midst. Even when it doesn't look like it, even when the adversary is there, the Lord is there in the midst of thee. It says, wondrously show your steadfast love, O Savior of those who seek refuge. He has steadfast love. He's never going to leave us. And all we have to do is seek refuge in him, meaning we need to run into him and be safe. It says from their adversaries at your right hand. So he's going to save me from my adversaries where at his right hand, because his right hand has strength. It's his hand that is going to keep us guarded, keep us guided, and it's going to keep us covered. So we don't have to depend on our own strength. We can depend on the strength of the Savior to keep us. All right, verse eight, keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. So it says, keep me as the apple of your eye. We know that to be like a David psalm, right? Because we know that he is, he was the apple of God's eye. But you know what? Through Christ Jesus, we all can be the apple of God's eye. Why? Because Christ is a descendant of David. And David is in that same lineage of a Christ-like man, right? Just like Melchizedek was um, in that same kind of, of like a, a priest, but not in the same way, not as in a Levite, right? So in the same order as Melchizedek, in the same sense of um, being a Christ-like man, um, a, a, a foreshadowing of the Messiah, not the Messiah, but so only the Messiah can be the Messiah. Only Jesus could be Jesus, right? But we saw small shadows, small glimpses of him through certain people like David, like Isaac, um, and like Mel Melchizedek. So um, it says, keep me as the apple of your eye. So not just um, letting me be there for a moment. Keep me there, Lord. Keep me at the center of your focus, the center of your attention, Lord God. Watch out for me. Don't look away from me. Help me. Keep me. Hide me is what the next part says. Hide me in the shadow of your wings, meaning kind of like block me from the influences, right? The the light, the 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 beam of light that might be hurting others, um, let me be blocked from it. Lord, the beam that's coming at other people, the thing that the thing that is being aimed at me, keep me from it, right? Wow, through the shadow of your wings, right? He's gonna he's gonna hide us under the shadow of his wings, like an eagle would hide its baby chicks, right? And guard them from the rain and guard them from the outside influences. So it says, keep me as the apple of your eye, right? Keep me in your mind, Lord. Keep me in your mind's eye. And then it all says, hide me. Also says, hide me in the shadow of your wings. All right, verse nine, from the wicked who do me violence, my deadly enemies who surround me. So remember, he's always there. Don't forget the conflation scripture. It says he is in the midst of thee. He is always there walking around. Even when the enemy seems like he's cl close, remember the shield that we always talk about is a shield and buckler. It is a shield um, of, of overall shield for the entire body, meaning the entire self but it's also a buckler for when the enemy comes in like a flood, when the enemy gets really close to you and he wants that hand-to-hand one-on-one combat, the Lord is a buckler as well. And so he's going to keep us in those close situations where it's like, oh my goodness, uh, am I next in line to get the boot? Yeah, you might be next in line to get the boot, but you know what? He's going to be in the midst of the, and he's going to keep you. He's going to hide you. He's going to make sure you're taken care of. Why? Because you're not like everyone else you are a child of the king if you get the boot if you get fired don't worry there's something else there for you all things work together for your good it says from the wicked who do me violence my deadly enemies who surround me so the wicked are doing violence right they might form a weapon they might come at you they might try to do violence but remember god does not align himself with people who do violence let's read verse 9 again from the wicked who do me violence my deadly enemies who surround me so who are we hiding from in the shadow of 
the wings of God, we are hiding from the enemy, right? And it's okay to hide from the enemy when you're hiding behind a God of the universe, right? So he is going to keep us as the apple of his eye. He's going to hide us in the shadow of his wings from the wicked who do us violence. And God is going to be the one who gets the vindication, right? He's going to be the one to handle the enemies. He's going to shield us. He's going to be the buckler from the wicked who do me violence, my deadly enemies who surround me. So what is the key to remember in the conflation? Let's go back to the beginning. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitants of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. He is in the midst. Even when the enemy is in the midst, he is in the midst and he can hide you even from the enemy. And whether the enemy sees you or not, he's in the midst. He's right there, right? But but in our prayers, our prayers, like God veils us from the enemy that he hides us in the shadow of his wings. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this conflation of scriptures. Thank you for hiding us under the shadow of your wings, God. You are in the midst of us. You are walking around our houses. You are welcome here. Lord, your spirit is welcome here. Your voice is welcome in our hearts. Let us abide in you, God. And when we come out of you and, and we mess up or we do something, bring us back into you, God. Help us to come back to the abide. Lord Jesus, come find us. We love you. We praise you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than saying the words, believe them with all your heart as you confess them with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross and rose again on the third day. Be my Savior and my Lord. Forgive me for all my sins, Jesus. I have led myself for long enough. I'm asking you to sit on the throne of my heart and lead me. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. So the Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. He's going to show you the way in your life for all your decision making. There's nothing out of bounds with the Holy Spirit. He's going to lead you and guide you into all truth. That means what job you're supposed to take, what you're going to eat for lunch tomorrow, everything. And the Holy Spirit can give you guidance in all things. It says he's going to lead you into all truth. So we are asking that God bless you and that he shows you the way that he shows you, you know, um, the, the path to take in your life. According to Ephesians, it, it, it said that there and God has a plan for you and the Holy Spirit is going to lead you in that plan and help you get on the right path. So um, he's going to show you a church home to go to, um, other believers to fellowship around, as well as, you know, like just where to go get baptized, right? God is with you and he loves you. He wants to make his home with you. He wants you to abide in his home, basically. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.